Welcome to the final day of our fifth annual Rethink the Rink Makeathon, which aims to make hockey a safer sport without compromising the integrity of the game. I'm Tara Zercher. This is my colleague Bob Walker. Hi, Tara. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and we are concluding a very exciting week here at the Makeathon. Bob, do you want to tell us a little bit about the week and some of your impressions from it? Sure. Um, yeah, we kicked off the week on Monday with a number of presentations to the students about what the challenge was going to be this year. And then we set them free um, on Monday afternoon late to work for the rest of the week on solving an issue. And that issue was the intersection of glass with the dasher board systems. And uh, in a short three days of work, today we, we saw the, the, uh, the, the uh, result of all of that effort. And that uh, was really astounding. We, we had a really strong presentation by all four teams. All four teams presented some really great ideas, and where does it go from here? I think we take it now and, and look, uh, digest it a little bit, and then work with uh, Athletic and Sports Systems uh, on uh, you know what what our next steps are. So it's a very exciting week. Very exciting. Um, as Bob mentioned, we just got done watching the students' presentation. The judges deliberated. We just had a little award ceremony. So what we have planned today is we're going to interview some of the judges and folks involved in this week, and we're going to interview the winning team as well. Yes, we are. I'll be back shortly with the winning team. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions for our experts, you can feel free to just type them into the chat of whichever social media platform you are streaming from. Thanks. So now I'm going to go over and talk to a very important person from the Pittsburgh Penguins organization, Mark Turley. Can you tell us what you do for the pen? Yeah, we're in our partnership group, uh, our sponsorship team. You know, we're always looking for innovative ways to integrate partners. We have a terrific relationship with Cabestro, our official innovation partner for the past five years. So uh, we're off and running with the, the fifth maker. Yeah, we love our partnership with the pen as well. Yeah, we, we love ours with Cabestro. <laughs> Um, can you tell us what was your favorite part of the week? Well, you know, I think, and I said this to Bob and I said this to Hopkin earlier, where, uh, you know, I sort of liken what happens here to an episode of Shop and like watch Food Network, you know? <laughs> and, you know, they, the students come in, they don't know what they're going to work on. And they, uh, you know, open the basket on Monday morning, so to speak, and they get their assignment. And it's amazing to me, you know, they're college kids, they're giving up a whole week of spring break, and they tackle this, and every time we come back here on Friday, and today probably the best prototype so I can probably see, you know, it's just that finished product that happens over those five days is amazing to me. So that's my favorite part. Yeah, that is so exciting <laughs> yeah. to see what they come up with. Um, so can you tell us about the winning team and a little bit about what they brought to the table? Well, I think, you know, just the, the, the enthusiasm that, that, that they come here, you know, and, and, and I think the, 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 the thought process is just the level that they're capable of, of thinking on I and mean, their problem solving abilities at that age is incredible. I, mean, I, I don't know that all of them understand the game of hockey in a way that maybe, you know, some of us who work in hockey do, but they're able to um, embrace all of that and understand material science, understand engineering, look at the problem. And I threw a little different lens at them. So I, I, I think the winning team was particularly good, great prototype, uh, and a potential solution. Excellent. So my last question sure. for you is what's next? What's next for hockey safety and its collaboration? You know, there's no, there's no shortage of ideas that we can tackle, and we work with the investor folks like, like you throughout the year. And, and, and come up with, a, you know, things that we feel like we can improve. So we'll go back, we'll regroup, take a look at what we accomplished this year. Now we've got this list, so what is the next most natural thing in the team? And we'll make that decision sort of collectively. Uh, you know, we involve PPT this year, we'll see where that goes. And, um, but it, whatever it is, it'll be a terrific project, and we'll be right back here again next year. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Mark. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Bob, again. Thank you, Tara. Um, with me here is Sandra Dickinson Wolf from Carnegie Mellon University. And Sandra, you have been with uh, all the students and some of us all week this week. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you saw today, the, the presentations, the awards? So the presentations today were really fantastic and it's really impressive to see how they've come together in such a short amount of time. Only just yesterday we were helping the students with some feedback on their early ideas for their presentations and then here we are 24 hours later watching them really get their thoughts together and be able to communicate that to the judges and to the audience in a meaningful way has really been impressive. And as far as the awards go today, so there are a number of awards, but really everyone wins. So this is a collaboration slash competition. And while there are a couple of general awards that are given out, there's also a specific award for best prototype. And that goes to the team that was best able to demonstrate their idea, whether it be as a stationary physical product or something that they test in real time, or they literally demonstrate how it will behave under action or under gameplay and another one of the awards was most innovative and that is given to the team that comes up with I'd say the almost the most unusual or most creative idea and has really made use of a lot of different ideas to pull together a solution. What, what, were you, what was you the thing that you were most impressed with today? Probably just the, the change from the beginning of the week um, from, you know, students just getting to know each other for the first time at the beginning of the week to the friendships and collaborative spirit that, that we see here today and how they're all been working together to come to solutions. Because what's really going to happen now, and they recognize this on the first day, is it's no one team that's going to win really and no one idea that's going to move forward. But they recognize that it's a little bit of all these ideas that are going to help solve this problem. Uh, last question. So we've been together doing this for five years. What do you see uh, for the future? Well, that's hard to say. Um, there are so many different ideas that we could tackle. Um, one of the things I guess that hasn't we haven't gone after too strongly yet is maybe the fan experience. Uh, just to have something a little bit different. But I'm sure there are other areas of player safety, like maybe focusing on the skates um, that could be addressed or even looking towards pushing the solutions and ideas more towards the youth players. Right, very good. Thank you, Sandra. Really nice talking to you today, and thanks for joining us. Oh, it's been my pleasure, yeah. as always. Thank you. I'm going to turn it back over now to uh, Tara, who's going to talk to one of my colleagues, Mark Bondi. Thank you, Bob. I'm here again with Mark Bondi. You might recognize his face from our Monday stream. He was one of the coaches and one of the judges in this year's competition. So, hi Mark. Hello, thanks for having me again. Thank you for joining us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience this week? What was it like coaching and judging these students? Yeah, coaching, I think the, uh, the words that come to mind when I think about it are fun and inspirational. So, you know, just being around the excitement of the teams, uh, they're giving up their spring break to be here with us. and, and it's because they want to be impactful. They want to do something that uh, that matters, and so it's it's just a lot of fun to see that. And then, as far as being inspirational, it's for me going back to work, uh, thinking about how these these students are thinking about the materials that I work with every day. Some of these folks have never heard of you know what a TPU is or what a polycarbonate is. So seeing them uh, come up and be so inventive with uh, the products, it it takes you know something I could take back to to my work. That's an inspiration. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit, what were you most impressed with this week? Yeah, I think um, it was really the inspiration that some of these teams used to kind of bridge into their products. So we had teams that were referencing tree fibers uh, to strengthen uh, in one direction potentially. We had uh, teams looking at bridge designs and, and other uh, biological type, type things to influence their design and, and make it, um, you know, more... Uh, what's the word? More natural, it seems like, uh, to help help the board's design. So I thought that was really cool. Well, thank you, Mark. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, and hope to see you again next year. <laughs> yep. Likewise. Hope to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Now I'm going to hand it back over to Bob, who actually has the winning team here with him. Thank you, Tara. I have with me uh, Team Purple, which is the winning team for this year's Makeathon. 
And uh, I'd like you all to introduce yourselves one at a time and uh, your, your major and what year are you in at CMU? Uh, so I'm, I'm a second year student master's at the Entertainment Technology Center at CMU. Um, I'm Isaiah Lurch. I'm a sophomore in mechanical engineering. I'm Brandon Wayne, a senior double majoring in electrical computer engineering and robotics. I'm Luca Garrati. I am a sophomore in electrical and computer engineering. Thank you, guys. Um, so, what was your inspiration for the, the, the end result of your work this week? So, we started off with the panels, the paint the glass, because we saw that they had a lot of scratch issues. So, we, we tried to fix that using the OptiCore, but then we realized it had other associated problems, and it led us on a chain reaction of various solutions. Okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead, Isaiah. Yeah, we also took inspiration from tree fibers, like you guys were mentioning, to get some natural elements as to the bending. From tree fi fibers? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, they add some stiffness in one direction while still maintaining the tension in another, so that was helpful. So what do you think your, um, your winning idea could potentially mean for, for the sport of hockey? Oh, that could mean a lot. Well, the first thing it could be is like a a softer panel so people can flex on it a bit more. It basically lowers the concussion rate for people. Also, like the biggest problem right now is the stanchions, the stanchions are pretty stiff right now. And this, is, this material is a bit more flexible and bendable, which means it's a bit softer for people. Uh, people can bounce off of it. Has anyone add to that? Another major thing we're trying to fix is maintenance because when they came to explain it, they spent a lot of time explaining how annoying it is to buff and only mm -hmm. clean with water. Right. And so they're like, you can use coatings, but coatings have so many other issues. And then it was the perfect convention. Like, hey, we also have this OptiCord that fixes all of these problems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, last question for each of you, and I'll ask it uh, of each of you. What was your favorite part of the week? Oh. 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 <laughs> well. There were some troubles along the week, but actually presenting it and see everyone's wow factor kind of deal, eyes opening up and like people leaning in and being like, wow, that's that's great. You can see it in their eyes. That was that was like oh very cool. Feel like aha moment for me. Yep. Right How about you, Isaiah? Yeah, I'd say I mean everyone coming together, all four teams, we kind of got to know each other well and it, see everyone working hard and developing something they're passionate about, and even all the experts coming in and giving us advice. I really like that dynamic. Great, Brandon, how about you? It was a lot of fun experimenting with different tools and technologies like SolidWorks, Arduino, MATLAB, and combining them all together to create the perfect prototypes. Great. And for me, it was definitely making the prototypes. I slaved over the lights <laughs> and solid works to get that trust design. <laughs> well, that, it's obvious. I mean, I, before we close, I want to, uh, again, congratulate you all uh, on behalf of Covestro, on behalf of all of our partners. Nice work, guys. I'm glad you had a good week. And uh, thanks again for being participants. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'd like to turn it back over to, to Tara. Thank you, Bob. So I'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in to our recap of this very exciting week. Um, we are just really looking forward to seeing what comes out of this collaboration and all of these ideas this year. In the meantime, you can follow along with our hockey safety journey on Twitter and LinkedIn using the hashtag RethinkTheRink. Thank you and have a great day.